What is going on internet? My name is Lou and I make Linux videos. Tonight I am very excited to be bringing you the very first installment in my new series, Switching to Fedora Linux. This series is going to focus on tips, tricks, and how-tos in getting you, the user, uh, up and running with Fedora Linux with things like multimedia codecs, installing proprietary video drivers, uh, getting things like Steam working, uh, all of those types of ordinary tasks that us Linux users oftentimes struggle with, I'm going to help you uh, so that you can have a great experience using Fedora Linux. I'm also going to be putting an emphasis on the user who's mainly been used to Ubuntu or Ubuntu-based Linux distributions uh, on how to cross over from Ubuntu into the world of Fedora. And believe it or not, uh, there are a lot of similarities, um, but I think that uh, what Fedora offers um, for me and for my needs uh, far exceeds uh, in terms of an experience uh, what Ubuntu has been able to do for, for me as a user. So hopefully these videos help you out. I figure, you know, what better way to start the series off than right from the beginning, and that's how to install Fedora. So we're going to be installing Fedora 21 tonight. And, you know, there's a lot of similarities, but there are certain caveats that may trip up the uh, new Fedora user. So we're going to work through those tonight. To do that, we're going to be using Boxes. Now, Boxes is a GNOME virtualization application, which is awesome, by the way. Uh, I've been playing around with this app, and it's phenomenal. I think it's great for the, for the person who wants to, all they want to do is not get too technical with the app, but be able to just install uh, different Linux distros, or maybe, for example, if I want to test out what's going on in Rawhide, which is kind of the rolling, uh, most bleeding edge version of Fedora, I can have it going on inside of a virtual box here, and I don't have to install it to my hard drive and mess up my uh, system that's up and running just the way I like it. So uh, I can't say enough good things about boxes. I think for what its intended purpose is, it does a fantastic job. So now that we have boxes open, we're going to select new. We're going to hit continue. Now I can enter a website URL, which is an awesome feature, by the way, or I can select an ISO, which is what I'm going to do. Now I can hit customize, and I'm going to give this image six gigs. I've got 16 gigs of RAM on this system, so I think I can uh, I can spare six. And we're going to leave the the uh, disk image size just the way it is. We're going to go back here and hit create. So it's now going to boot off the live ISO. I'm going to hit enter. Now again, this is a graphical installer. So you don't have to be afraid that you're going to have to install Fedora using a command line. It's similar to Ubuntu or a lot of other Linux distros these days uh, in the fact that it uses a graphical installer. Now the only caveats to this installer is it's not as automated or um, it is automated in a sense, but the way that you access uh, certain features of the installation is a little bit different. So we're going to select install the hard drive. The first screen you're going to be greeted with is the welcome screen, and it's going to ask you to select your language. English is fine for me, and we're going to hit continue. So now we're greeted with some options here. Again, this is what I mean by it's not completely all you know, kind of just hitting the next button. You have to go through each category, so localization and system. Um, so for me, the Americas or New York time zone is correct, but let's say, for instance, it wasn't. You're going to select date and time. You're going to change your region and your city. Now, if you can keep this little tip in mind, you're going to get through this installation uh, very quickly. So you're going to change whatever you need to change here in the configuration section and then in the upper left hand corner when you're done you're just gonna select the done option keyboard the English option is fine and for system you're gonna go here because we're gonna select what hard drive in our partitioning scheme so because this is a virtual image it's automatically gonna select that for me on my particular system I have two hard drives I have an SSD which holds my operating system and I have uh, a spinning drive, a one terabyte Seagate Barracuda drive that I keep 
all my multimedia and in storage things on. So um, I would normally select an SSD. Um, if you only have one hard drive in your computer, it's going to automatically select that for you because it's the only option. Now down here under other storage options, you're going to see it says partitioning. You can either automatically configure, which is what I recommend for most users. You can configure your own partitioning scheme. Um, you can make additional space available and it'll give you an encryption um, uh, option as well. So if Fedora is going to be the only operating system on your machine, I highly uh, recommend just keeping the automatically configure partitioning uh, option. We don't, we're not going to get into partitioning a hard drive because there's so many different things that you can do with that. It's a little bit more advanced. If you don't really know too much about partitioning uh, or even what it is, you shouldn't be messing with it here. So uh, just leave it as automatically configure partitioning. So now because we're done, uh, we're going to, in the upper left hand corner again, we're going to select done. As you can see prior, it had a little uh, orange or yellow uh, triangle here with an exclamation point because it needed my attention. But now that that is all squared away, that message has been removed. Network and host name. We're going to change our host name right here. What do I mean by host name? Well, the easiest way I can explain it to you is this. If we open up a terminal window here, I'm going to key you in on where it says my name, Lou. That's my username and then it has the at symbol and I have named so aptly named my uh, host name is Fedora okay so that's what the host name is there so when you open up terminal whatever you see after your username uh, that's that's gonna be your host name so for this one here we're just gonna do Fedora 21 we're to select done all right, so that's all set. Now what we're gonna do is hit select uh, begin installation in the bottom right hand corner. Again, you see the two triangles here with the exclamation point, which means, hey, I need your attention. You need, some, uh, you need to do some configuring. So we're gonna select a root password. This is not the password I would normally use. Uh, you know, select something that's very unique and it's gonna give you how uh, complex it's going to rate it whatever you select as a password is going to give you a rating it says that this is a fair password make sure that you know this is a very strong password because again it's your root password i'm going to select done we're going to create my user so for me it's going to be lou i highly recommend selecting make this user administrator um, if you're going to be using this virtual machine for your primary system and this is not just going to be um, an installation that you're going to use on a client machine that you're going to be accessing from a host machine, uh, then I highly suggest just selecting make this user administrator. Otherwise, uh, when you try to run the sudo command or anything with root privileges or elevated privileges, you're going to run into some issues. If you forget to do this, you can always fix it later, but it's just easier uh, to get it done now. So we're going to select our user password, or in this case, it's also our administrator password. Then again, we're going to up in the upper left hand corner, we're going to select done. And that's it. <laughs> Believe it or not, it's that simple. Um, so, you know, you'll hear people say Fedora is for the more advanced user. Uh, that was pretty basic to me. Um, down here, it's going to give you a progress of how far we are along in the installation, both graphically here with this blue line, as well as a percentage of what's going on. Um, so, you know, again, I think part of the reason why there was a large adoption of Ubuntu is because Ubuntu made things very out of the box easy for uh, the user. And, you know, it attracted a lot of people who were unfamiliar with Linux because they tried to make things easy. You know, Fedora hasn't always gone out of their way to do that because it's always had a lot of experienced users running it. You know, I've mentioned, you know, a lot of the kernel developers. Uh, are using Fedora. They're also on the Fedora development team. Uh, a lot of the GNOME developers are also on the Fedora development team. So uh, it's been used oftentimes um, by a lot of experienced users. And Fedora, of course, is the breeding ground that eventually becomes Red Hat Linux. So, you know, they haven't always gone out of their way to do what Ubuntu is doing. And you know what? In all fairness, they didn't have to because Ubuntu is already doing it. Why reduplicate efforts? They weren't trying to become the next big end user 
uh, Linux distribution of choice, um, you know, they had their own goals. And I respect that. Uh, but I think Fedora is also a very viable option for, you know, the end user or the consumer um, to be able to install it and using use it just as you would Ubuntu. Um, so right now our installation is complete. Now again, unlike Ubuntu, what's going to happen if you're installing it using a DVD, which I don't see many people doing anymore, or a USB drive, it's going to ask you to reboot the installation and then it's going to have you eject the medium that you used to install it. Here it's not going to do that. So we're going to hit quit. It's going to bring us right back to the desktop. You're going to have to, in the upper right hand corner, uh, go over here and select restart. This is going to restart the machine as you see here in boxes. should give us a live thumbnail and it is of the machine restarting. So like I was saying, Ubuntu was making things, they, they were the f first to really popularize the out-of-the-box experience. A lot of people, you know, uh, gravitated to that very early on. And then, you know, you saw the forums being flooded with how-tos. You saw people making videos, uh, highlighting Fedora. And then the resources of Fedora kind of organically grew. So as people were having problems, they can jump on the web and find solutions to their issues, find people writing forum posts about it. Hey, I have this problem. How do I fix it? Um, so on and so forth. Hey, I want to configure this. How do I do it? And they had resources. Fedora doesn't have a lot of that. They have because again, they they didn't they weren't designed for that reason. Ubuntu already existed and they were already accomplishing that. So they didn't really need to do that. What I hopefully th feel like I can do is help contribute to the how-tos and the tutorials because there's not a whole heck of a lot of those online. I feel like if there was more resources to show um, users how to get things done when they were having issues, then more people would adopt a very good Linux distribution and be able to benefit from it. So hopefully we can get that done with this series. So with that said, let's log into our desktop. Boxes is also really nice because you don't have to mess around with the um, VirtualBox guest editions or any of that baloney. It's just right out of the box. It's ready to go. So you're going to be greeted with this welcome screen, which is really nice. Um, Fedora has also, again, been knocked in, time, uh, in the times past with fit and finish issues. Uh, I think the polish on Fedora 21 is outstanding. So let's hit next because English is fine. Keyboard layout English is fine. If you have any online accounts, you can uh, get those all hooked up right here. We're going to skip that. All right, we're all set. Let's uh, start using Fedora. And a nice little getting started screen uh, is going to pop up here. It's going to give us some links to common tasks and also a link to directly go to get some help with GNOME itself. So this is it. This is your GNOME desktop. Now, um, if you want to do things the graphical way, you can use the software application and you can come over here to the right hand tab where it says update it says software is up to date well let's check it now by uh, selecting this icon up here on the top left and it's going to look for some new updates are we connected to the web let's see we are all right let's do this my favorite way Let's open up terminal and what we're going to do and for you Ubuntu users uh, you can take take note of this we're going to do sudo yum update much like a sudo app get update hit enter it's going to give us the standard warning for using administrator privileges and helps if I type my password correctly and now it's going to go and fetch any type of updates uh, that are available for the system. And if I, memory serves me correct, there's probably 750 megabytes of installed updates ready to go for this. This is a 64-bit installation too, by the way. All right, 497 packages in total with a total download size of 702 megabytes. Is this okay? We're just going to hit Y for yes and hit enter. And that's it, guys. That is how you run your initial update. 
So it's going to download, uh, looks like a total of 519. And um, we're going to get the progress here. And then it's going to go right into installation. But this is how you install Fedora. And once you get into your new desktop, that's how you run your updates. Uh, simple as sudo yum update. And hopefully this uh, video helped you guys with getting Fedora 21 installed on your hard drives. Uh, if so, uh, on the uh, video uh, section below, give me a thumbs up if the video helped. Leave a comment in the comment section if there was any questions you had that I may not have uh, addressed um, or answered here in this video. Uh, and just leave a general comment of what you think of the series, anything specifically that you are interested in. Uh, and I uh, will try to get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, we'll catch you later.